having an exhibition where people are encouraged and uh, if you go to a lot of fashion exhibitions it's normally just a row of mannequins with a date and uh, maybe a little bit about their childhood or something but uh, as you've already seen there's not you've not seen any clothes yet and uh, because what I wanted to do when we had the exhibition in London what was fantastic first of all it was the most popular exhibition the design museum in London have ever had which sorry showing off <laughs> it's true uh, and uh, and also they extended it for nearly three months because it was so popular but one of the key things for me was that it was um, people uh, young lots of young people from the age of 11 to 25 or 6 um, coming lots of schools coming and what I wanted the exhibition to be is just um, what do you know what I say if I say goosebumps? You know, yeah. you get goosebumps. I want you, you know, I wanted people to leave the exhibition with goosebumps to think, I can do that, I can do that. So, we're well, not necessarily a fashion designer, but you know, uh, you go and you see the humble way that I started, and uh, hopefully I'm still the same, uh, <laughs> that, that you, you can you'd be encouraged by it. So, that was the idea. Uh, some of the my collection of photography or art and uh, what I like very much is um, I like things uh, uh, in all my shops around the world I always have what we call an art wall uh, which can be something from a child that's written a letter or it could be I mean uh, it could be a you know a famous famous work so what have I got here I've got the baby Bailey photography there's uh, Mario Testino there's um, Picasso print there. So the, I like the fact that there's this mix of things that have no value financially, but of a lot of value to me, or they have a lot of value because they're by somebody well known. So that's just a, an interest, um, interesting start. And also I, I like my shops, when you go into a shop, I like you to be fascinated and look look at things because so many of the shops in the world today I find that are very formulaic they all look so similar so when you come into one of my shops I hope you'll go oh why has he got that and that's a bit strange and I like that aspect of it um, so behind you in here and in that cabinet there on the left this is um, this is it's, uh, it's got the description here but basically I've got a fan uh, from America that for over almost 30 years now has been sending me objects uh, as you can see a piece of wood um, a, a fishing net a, a bowling skittle and very regularly I've been receiving these but they're never in a box they always arrive with the address and the stamps actually on them and the other thing is that they're by an unknown fan so I have no idea who it is, there's never a demand with it, there's, there's just arrived. And one of the joyful things that I'm very blessed with is that I receive so many beautiful letters every, every week, so many objects and people just send things and there seem to be this unwritten rule that you can com connect with me and I obviously that's, I'm very humbled by that. And um, so, the the amazing thing is that we don't get letters that say I want money or I hate you or I love you or whatever <laughs> we just get lots of letters and they're fa it's fascinating Whereas if you can train yourself to think left or right of the obvious route in other words if you could be a lateral thinker then 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 that's when you can be inspired so frankly I could be in a toilet and be inspired or I could be in a beautiful palace and be inspired because it's all about the way your mind works and so when you're looking here if you if what's coming it's very photogenic so you can take pictures could you stand, stand anywhere you want but here for instance in today's world we should so just listen from everything full of too much of everything a lot of design, not just in the world of fashion, product design, car design, everything really. I think it's so important for us to be cautious and conscious of not following.
not of following that's why using their that. own brains and our own observational skills to get inspiration. I have a very popular Instagram site and all the pictures on there are just things I see. Very, very, very rarely are they anything to do with my actual job. So it could be a reflection, it could be the sky, it could be an odd combination of things that I spot or just people just walking down the street. I love street markets. Street markets are great because they bring together things that are kitsch or beautiful, have no value or a lot of value, things from different periods of time. And even just looking at them and photographing them, not necessarily buying them, could be a big inspiration. So And I just did a project with Instagram themselves where I took, uh, where I did a walk around London uh, with, with um, people like ourselves. So I took, um, Instagram asked me to do a walk around London um, and just through my eyes because um, it's a quite, you know, the thing that's unusual, it's not unusual for you guys at all, but for, for a fashion brand to have an Instagram site that's not a commercial one, it's just to just whatever I, what I want so these are all just the way I see things so um, they're actually quite popular because I think people find it so fresh that it doesn't it's not advertising shoes or something like that photo opportunity or what look at that with the button well, it's probably too bright isn't it but it's quite nice with the buttons isn't it Yeah, so I've got one room in a shop in London, I've got one, one shop that's got dominoes, you know dominoes, yeah. like 27,000 dominoes, and then I've, my shop in Paris has got coins, so we always try and do something that surprises people, makes it a bit different, and as you know the whole world is, is unfortunately full of this corporate attitude, this corporate rollout, and so many of the fashion brands unfortunately are no different to Starbucks or whatever because it's a product, an idea, money and then you roll out the idea and what's so sad is everything around the world has a very similar feeling, a similar appearance. So the next room you're going to, we have 12 in-house designers, uh, uh, architects and interior designers. So all my shops around the world have a, this is just a small example of them, but they all have their own character and often they, they fit in with the location as well. So we have another little sentence. I'm very good with my sentences tonight, aren't I? Uh, uh, they think global, act local. So for instance, the shop in Los Angeles, for those of you who haven't been to Los Angeles, it's 40 miles across, it's completely flat. Very few people walk. So when I wanted to get a shop in Los Angeles and design it from a table in London, I kept thinking I've got to build the Eiffel Tower. I've got to build something that stands out. So by putting this pink, creating this pink box with the blue sky, uh, it's become, I mean, I just, somebody yesterday just sent me pictures that they do a <coughs> photo shoot outside there against the wall. Um, we've even had people arrive with tables and chairs doing an interior design shoot against the, <laughs> the pink. And then when the St. Martin's School students went to Los Angeles for the first time, they used the Paul Smith of a uh, shop as a point of reference to meet up at. So that was really good. That's a house in Kyoto, which we turned into a shop. That was built in 1735. <clears throat> And I've managed, that was a house, and I've got it now as a shop with a big garden. That, I built the whole building in the year 2000 out of steel and glass. I've got a roof garden and an art gallery. That's Milan, that's an old house built in 1850. 